in Chad's uh, co-working location in Hamilton, Ontario. Mm -hmm. I just made the long trek down hour an hour drive. <laughs> uh, so this is so we're doing a couple things here. We're actually shooting a video course, uh, but we're do we've set a bunch of stuff up so you can see some behind the scenes first. What we're doing is we're taking a PLR course from Sharon Sheldon, so private label rights course, eliminate business overwhelm. It, it, this is a huge topic. We, we just finished our series of four webinars and we did a bunch of private webinars as well. And people easily get overwhelmed, especially if they're new to business. So if you're watching this in your first couple of years, uh, tacky stuff alone, like the stuff that Chad teaches on a regular basis, people are constantly getting overwhelmed, right? So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to follow Sharon's course uh, and create our own basically customized, personalized version of this course. Uh, as a video course, we're going to use her PLR materials uh, to kind of do most of the heavy lifting for us. We are going to create intro videos for each module of this course. Four, five, six minute videos per module. And then below the video is going to be the actual uh, reading material, the exercises for the students to do. But our videos is how we're making it customized. This is just a behind the scenes look. We're literally gonna brainstorm right now for you what we wanna to do to create this course. Uh, so this was Chad's idea, so thanks for that. Uh, his idea was to sh turn on the camera early and actually show you folks watching how we are actually going to build the course. Maybe you can borrow some of these ideas or modeling. So what we're, what's interesting about this is I don't even know a lot of what's in Sharon's course yet. I just know this is a topic that both of us can talk about because we've been in business long enough that we've faced our own overwhelm, had to deal with it, had to get to the other side of it. So we're literally going to use her topics to come up with uh, our course. Yeah. So we have it over, you can't see it, I don't think, from any of the cameras we have, maybe from the other one down there. Uh, it's a bunch of modules, we're gonna read them and we're gonna brainstorm what we wanna teach. Mm -hmm. So module one is to identify your areas of overwhelm. So we're, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this whiteboard to uh, give our, uh, as Chad and I create the video lessons, we're gonna use this whiteboard as cues. So for module one, for example, um, it's called identify your areas of overwhelm. So what we'll do here is we're gonna base, make this very personal experiential. So for Chad and I, we're just gonna to try to identify a story uh, where we've had to over, um, identify our areas of overwhelm. So um, for, we're, we're gonna flip back and forth. So video one, I'll go first. I'll introduce the topic, I'll tell my story, I'll flip it over to Chad, he can give his take on the topic. So module one is identify, I'll just put ID, your areas of overwhelm. So for Justin's story, for me, uh, I'm thinking, let me just brainstorm right now. So identifying my personal areas of overwhelm, uh, I'm gonna think kind of uh, from the furthest time back to current day. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I wanna do is, I wanna tell maybe one little story from when I was first getting started. So one of the first things I did, this is just literally off the top of my head, is when I was building my business, uh, I was still in the corporate world, and one of the things I did to kind of get myself going, to hold, basically hold myself, or yeah, hold myself accountable so that I actually start a company, uh, and I've told this story before, but is I went down to a local meeting hall and I booked it. Did I tell you that story before? I think you did. Yeah, so I, like I booked this, it's a, it was a meeting room like this, but bigger, and I was gonna host my own seminar, and I didn't know what the seminar was going to be, what, like, how long it would be, who would come, any of it. But I went and paid, and so I locked myself in because it's like, well, now I've got this room for a whole evening and I've got to run a, an event. So instant overwhelm, right? Like, it's like, what do I do next? So uh, that's a great example of now I've locked myself into something, I'm overwhelmed because I've got no idea what to do next. So my, the very first thing I did was I just sat down and I tried to chunk it, right? So for me, it was like, uh, areas of overwhelm for me are I leap into things because I know myself well enough all of us are like this I know myself well enough that if I try to if I try to put something off way in a distant date like one day I'm going to whatever I'll never do it yeah. so I just leap I throw myself into things and then I figure it out so my area area of overwhelm is um, kind of like I call it task overload um, in the sense that I know I, I've put myself in a situation where I have to deliver and I don't know how I'm going to do it. Yeah. And how I overcame that is chunking it down, asking for advice, be, very basic stuff really. But it was my first kind of experience of overwhelm. And then another one, like, so that's a, an older example. 
And then another one that's newer or relatively new is when I started doing more like, talks, like you and I met at one of my talks. Yeah. Uh, when you take on things like a speaking engagement, like, I hadn't done a lot of speaking when it came to the business I run now, content creation. So I had to get out there and speak in front of audiences. Sometimes it was like 50 people like the one I met you at, other times it was like multiple hundreds. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty intimidating. So that's an overwhelming feeling. So I may, tell, I may do like my first few talks. Okay, so what do you want to put for yours? So, yeah, so for maybe, me, maybe we just pick one. I don't know how long you want this video to be. Yeah, we'll try. But for me, it's, uh, um, there was two things that were, that were really overwhelming when I started out. It was uh, bookkeeping. Mm, um, great one, great example. That's, See, that, you know, that's you know, why I like working with you, because I always think like big picture <laughs> strategy, and you always get down to like, like tools, implementation. When you're starting a business, you got to wear many hats, and for me, I hate doing finances and numbers. Yeah. Um, I have to find tools. I found an accountant, a bookkeeper. Get Outsource what you're not good at, right? So uh, getting people to do that. Um, being able to go to networking events, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I'm more of an introvert than an extrovert, at least when I, I was when I started out. Mm -hmm. So I started doing meetups myself. I, I, I launched myself into doing freelancer meetups, which I, I co-ran with a friend of mine, um, where we had, you know, four, 50 people in a room that were complete strangers and we were the ones hosting it. So we were, all eyes were on us. Um, and then the other thing would just be just, um, just organizing ideas. So like just having too many ideas and not knowing which ones to prioritize and do first um, mm -hmm. and just writing them all down. Cool. So we, there's lots of This is good. So see, you can see the way this is working. Like Chad's, Chad listened to me say some stuff. It probably triggered ideas for you. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, now he's talking and I'm just remembering right away. The most obvious area of overwhelm for me, actually, neither of these two is financial. Yeah. I, I quit my job. I didn't just, my story is I started a business and then after about six months, I'm like, I'm quitting and we go full time to this. I didn't have enough money. My, my savings were done in about four months. That's so stressful. So yeah, so my overwhelm. I need a family to. Yeah, exactly. To so to like, yeah. huge overwhelm, and I had to learn how to deal with that. So I'm not going to tell you what my story is yet, but that's module one. So we just we, we crafted that's that. Out. That's easy. That's a good template. So that this is good, like that. So we're done with module one. Now we just have to shoot it. So then we'll we'll pull like some nicer chairs over, mm -hmm. and then we'll shoot that video. I think what I'll do is get my iPhone running off. Like you won't be able to see it. It'll be off the side there. We'll like have a timer yeah. so that we know like where, where we're at to, to cut it off. Like we don't want these videos any longer than like, what do you think, like five, six, yeah, seven five, minutes? Yeah, five, six minutes. Yeah. Because people, we want people to actually read the content and do the exercises, not listen to us talk all day, right? Yeah. So module two mm -hmm. is... Uh, managing your time for maximum productivity. Right. So I'll just put time. So setting priorities, a big one. Reducing your, your to-do list. Yeah, so yeah, prepare, exactly. preparing a master list is probably of all the stuff you need to do. Set your priorities, reduce your to-do list, and like chopping like things chopping off. Things off and so I've got like, I've got a hundred things to do. There's no way I'm getting to them all. So what circle the ones you're going to do, chop off the rest, okay? So, so, so you'll go first for this one, right? We'll just flip back and forth. Yeah, I think task overload can be, you know, even elaborated more onto that one too. Because mm -hmm. that's about to-do lists, right? So, yeah, so module one will just say, like, here's a couple of examples stories. of areas of overwhelm, but yours, your story is going to be different than ours and Chad's and whatever. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's. So, we're going to take that, that into mind, too. And I'll yeah. let you, whatever you want to put for. So, for module two, so. So, to do list, how, how we do our, our own to do list, maybe. Yeah, how, how man, you, time. Like, you have your journaling, you have your. Yeah, it basically is. It, yeah. it basically is deciding its priorities. Priorities, priorities to do list. Yeah. So, you can do that. Yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly. Yeah, really. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that may be the whole chapter. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That whole video. I is, I'll probably need to pick for this, I'll need to pick like one like idea example. that I just want to share and then let the PLR content do the rest. Yeah. So I might just talk about my daily strategy of deciding what I'm doing for the day. Because that's the most real, like they can watch the video and, and do that now. Yeah. Versus like what I do in a year is, and then they have to sit down and like, that's not as actionable. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to talk about my daily daily strategy. You're going to do maybe you do the same. Yeah. We can just, we can we can all talk about our own because our methods are different. So yeah. Yeah. Talk to that. Okay. All right. Uh, module three is increasing efficiency. Okay. So I'll read the little lessons within as you do that. Set limits and boundaries, uh, which can mean a lot of things. It probably means limits and boundaries with interactions from people. Would be my guess. Work, uh, work efficiency every day. Conquer email overwhelm. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. 
and then manage our social media strategically. So it's kind of like tools, like email and social media are kind of one. Yeah, I can definitely talk to those. So why don't you talk about how you manage that and I can talk about setting uh, limits, boundaries, work efficiently every day. I can definitely talk about working efficiently because I break my day into blocks. Like you, you know in working, doing a lot of projects with me that I, I'm pretty much unavailable from about 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. because that's like getting my kids to school time, gym time. Yeah. I block it off. Like, Blocking time is a and, and I don't do any work and I'm checking in nothing. Yeah. So I have to be really efficient from like 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't work at that early in the morning. That's fine. Yeah, but you can have nice and early. Which yeah, is, that's which what works for me, right? So Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk about like the, the boundaries of time. And what's that, what's that uh, principle called where you... Not the 80-20 rule, the other one where like, the work grows the amount of time given for it. You remember that? You know that principle? There's like a name for it. Um, I'm going to Google it. We can look it up. Um, it makes sense though. Like the, basically the concept is uh, if you give yourself three weeks to pull something off, you'll take the full three weeks. If you give yourself three hours, the mm-hmm. same task, yeah, you may not get the whole thing done, but you'll... Then you'll like be lazy for the rest of the time or like do something Exactly. Like so the work will grow to the amount of time allotted to it. I need to figure out... There is, I thought there was like a fancy name, like scientist name. I'm going to Google that. But there was a suggested result. It's Parkinson's Law. Oh, Parkinson's okay. Law is the adage that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Okay. And I... Yeah, I should know that because I did a blog post way back in the day... Uh, called Parkinson's plus Pareto equals success. So it's like, if you, if you use Parkinson's law with Pareto, which is the 80-20, yeah. then you're, you're taking like the 80% effectiveness, or what is it, no, the 20, 20% best actions for your day, mm-hmm. and then you're time blocking them into like, you only have an hour to pull them off. Yeah. So now you're gonna be like super efficient. Yeah. So mod four is reduce stress to avoid burnout, how do you know you're stressed? Get your life and work in balance. I don't really have, well, no, I guess I do have work-life balance, but I'm pretty extreme. And that's my personality, is like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of like all or nothing type of guy. But, that's, but I do balance, like I spend quite a bit of time with my kids, so I do balance. Yeah, you have family time. But I also, it's not uncommon for me to work like 100 hours in a week. Mm-hmm. So that's not very balanced. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in terms of what the average person would think about balance, but that's okay because like, I don't equate working a lot because I like what I do. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, it's like fulfilling my own potential. So there's zero stress or burnout because I'm loving it. Yeah. Like we're doing this. This is a Saturday, by the way. Yeah. Because we want to be here. Nobody told us to be here. It's like we don't even know if we're going to make money on this. This is just fun for me. I don't know about you. Yeah. Exactly. Um, can you put the word for me? Uh, unlock potential. Mm-hmm. Because that's how I avoid burnout. Is I just pick things that I want to do that I could do day and night and never feel tired because I enjoy them. So that's how I avoid burnout. Yeah. I'm now, if I, if I was like doing a job that I hated, mm-hmm. like I used to fill cement bags when I was in high school really? at, a, at a cement packing factory. So if I did 18 hour shifts there, I would burn out. I'd probably die. <laughs> so I'm not like, <laughs> like crazy. so it's completely labor. different. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just talk about the difference of that. Sure. And then I don't know, we might need to look into what review and refine, refine means. I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, we'll look that one up. You know what? So like, My, I, I'm gonna go check. ahead and say I'm gonna go ahead and say let's just do four videos. Sure. Or the fifth video could just be literally like a one minute like, yeah. Thanks for going through all of this. This last section, it's all covered in the text. Mm-hmm. But we're just hopping on camera one last time to just give you some words of encouragement as we say bid you adieu. Yeah. This is literally. Um, our, my best advice for getting stuff like this done. This was all set up. Chad came in early to get this all set up. I drove an hour and a half down. We walked in the room. We turned on this camera. We started telling you this stuff right now. We're done. We, we've planned this out. Now we're going to shut off this whole like behind the scenes stuff and get into the real filming. And we're taking how long of a break here. You're going to turn off that camera. You're going to turn it back off and we're going to start. Yep. So that's my kind of last piece of advice for people watching the behind the scenes stuff here. Reduce the amount of time so you don't, you don't overthink it. Like, I, I literally don't know what I'm going to say. We're going to turn on this camera. We're going to give it our best shot. And then the worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario, is I have to come back another day and we reshoot it. I doubt that's going to happen. I'm prepared to do it if I need to, but I don't, I'm not worried about how I'm going to sound or look or whatever. I'm confident I can talk about this topic. So you need to find a, co- a topic that you're confident in talking about. Don't buy a PLR course so you have no clue what the topic is because then you have nothing to share anyways. Both him and I can talk about this stuff. 
and we're just going to do it. And right? it comes across as more authentic, and when you script things, it makes it way more stressful in my mind. Like, I, oh, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, we're already in the script. Saying, oh, crap. Yeah. yeah oh, we missed uh, point 0.3 out of 10. <laughs> so now, like, I'm all, yeah, absolutely. It's the it worst thing you, you do. Yeah, so right. just, like, don't think about it, because the longer that time goes by, the more you have a chance to feel fear or worry or anxiety or whatever. Um, and then it's a good life lesson as well. I, I forget where I learned it, but I remember we went rock climbing a few years ago with my gym. A whole bunch of us went, and we went, we were getting a lesson, and the guy talked about everything. He's like, who wants to go first? I'm like, me. Like, I don't even think, because then if I waited for all the people to go, I'm going to be getting more and more and more nervous. Yeah. So I go right away. I always go first. So same idea, like just take action, get into action, and then you'll, you'll build, you'll, you'll kind of start flowing with that momentum. Mm -hmm. And that's where your true, you know, creative nature will come out. Like if you try to overthink it, then you'll, you'll probably start tripping over your own words more than you would want to. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to get started with this.